Well, wherever you're joining us from this Friday morning, finally, 23rd day of June. Yep, let's push it on like that. The 23rd day of June. And good to have each and every one of you at the live this morning, folks. I have a bit under the weather this morning. Whatever is happening in the back of your throat that happens when you have the onset, I think, of flu, that's happening to me, and I'm uh, taking some terror flu and see where it goes. But good to be here with you this morning. Uh, good to be here with you this morning. Great to be here with you this morning, guys. In spite of it, German Griffith, we see you there. A very good morning to you and all the other folks who are joining us. A very good morning to each and every one of you. We are simply delighted that you folks are here with us today. It's another day. We have work to be done and we got to keep moving forward. We got to keep moving forward. Good to see you folks, wherever you are joining us from. Uh, we're going to try to be here as long as we can, but it's coming down and it's coming down really, really, really heavy. But good to see you folks, guys. Good morning. We are ensuring that we are uh, shared to all of the right places at our end. And again, as I said, we are simply delighted that you folks are here with us. A bit under the weather. But we're going to keep pushing forward, folks. We're going to keep pushing, keep pushing forward. Share the live for us and smash that emoji button. We are workaholics in that way. <laughs> Good to see you folks here with us, wherever you're joining us from this morning. Wherever you're joining us from this morning, it's a privilege to be here with each and every one of you. And we're ensuring, guys, that we're shared to all the right places. Share to all of the right places. Good morning. Good morning, Gloria Fraser. Good morning, German Griffith. Tessa Isaac Scrivs Andy. Good morning to you. Yep. Tessa said it's a rainy Orlando. She's joining us from. A rainy, rainy Orlando. Make the best of it, Tessa. Make the best make the best of it. Give us a quick set and we're gonna be back with you guys. All right, all right, so we're back, folks. We are back, and again, we are happy to have you guys here with us. Whatever is that thing that, you know, what happens, you know, when you start getting the flu, you feel that scratchy feeling at the back of your throat? Well, that's what's happening to your body right now. That's what's happening. If you don't have any advice, I took some terror flu. We're going to see how that goes, and then we're going to take it, take it from there. But step into the AC, and then I feel like, you know, a lot of things is coming down on me this morning, but... We're here, folks. We're here. We're going to have Annette Cummins, Edward Brooms with us as well. Susan Kansias is here too. Yvette Juna is here. And uh, uh, Magalia Letlow, good to have you. And Lyndon Gill, uh, good to have you, folks. Ravi Niruk is here as well. I haven't seen Ravi in a little bit, but happy to have you this morning. Ravi, happy to have you. And all the other folks, Mark Allman and all the other folks joining us. Nico Chase and Fennel Innes. Joining us this morning, good to have each and every one of you folks on the live. We got a, quite a few things to get through in the morning paper today. Quite a few things to get through. Uh, Karen Hutt, we see you there. And Myrtle Hines, good morning, folks. Good morning. Camille Cox, good morning as well. Camille says a little ginger is going to do. Good, 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 good. Is it with the ginger tea bag do the same thing? Got some of that. Yep, yep. Miguel Letlo says try Benadryl. Good. Thanks very much for that. Thanks very much. I want my eyes to you right now. I feel something coming down my nostril. It's the, the, full, the full works, but God. But for the grace of God. Go I. Uh, Sh Sheridan Bob is here too. Uh, uh, I see Juliet. Hardy is here as well. Uh, Allison Duncan. Good morning to you, Allison. Family, family, family. Good morning, Allison. Good to see you. Elizabeth Williams is here as well. Uh, Travazzo Williams is here too. Guys, really glad to have all of you on the live this morning. We got a couple of things to get through, good folks. Got a couple of things to get you while I'm still together. <laughs> One piece. While I'm still together. Good to see you. Uh, Camille says no bag. The, the, the ginger, ginger. Yep, yep. Um, Crystal, Ro uh, Crystal Rodriguez says 
um, to get some carb drops. Suck a lot of carb drops. Thank you. Ginger fever grass. Point to get or vest he says. Oh, thank you so much for all the great advice. Thank you guys so much. I feel it kind of bearing down. Bearing down. Right? Bearing down on us. Yep, yep. A lot of, lot of, lot of folks, um, you know, giving advice. Thank you folks so much. I'm, I think I can try all of it. Mix it all up. Knock this thing right till it's a Knock it out. They said there's something in the air, a bug in the air, something, something of that nature. But quite a few things to get through in the morning papers, folks. That we want to walk you guys through. And, you know, we saw Todd uh, recently before this, um, this UN Human Rights Committee meeting and talking with some of the folks on that end. You know, should we be worried, folks? Should we be worried? Should we? Should we be worried? Yeah, you know, when it starts to step up to bat, we just get nervous. You know, can't lie, folks. We get, a, let me wipe my eyes. We get a bit nervous when, when that steps up. Can't lie. We just get nervous real bad. Real bad. So we're watching it. We're watching that, good folks. Part of, part of what we're following this morning, and they're telling us, let's make sure we have this accurate, um, accurately for you guys. Uh, this occasion was the, I want to make sure we have, we, we have the information correctly. Yep. Holding it together at this end, folks. Holding it together at this end. And this was the uh, foreign minister, you thought, meeting with the, Meeting with the um, this uh, Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, and other members of the board on the sidelines of the 43rd regular session of the General Assembly of the Organization of American States, not the UN. See, that's why I wanted to come back. No, it was something a little strange in my head. This is the Inter-American Inter Commission on, on Human Rights. It just had a judgment handed down from this same body. Uh, concerning Amerindian rights and land. Got to follow up on that. Amerindian rights and land, you know, the squatting and a lot of land of our indigenous brothers and sisters giving out um, mining concessions and all manner of things. All manner of things. So we're watching this. We're watching it. Alex Boom, Yolanda Thomas, Mavis Davis, well, we're watching it. One of the things we're watching. And noting how they're progressing. Javon McDonald, Sarah Brown, we're watching them. We're watching. What are you guys having for breakfast this morning? I'm thinking about uh, restaurant weekend. Sunday breakfast is right in my head. We can talk a little bit about that in a couple. Restaurant week, folks, starts today. That being said, so you know when Todd steps up, we get very nervous. We get, I hope he represented us well. Hope that he represented us well and you know, put himself there in, <laughs> in good stead. We hoping, folks. We hoping. We hoping. So this is one of the things we're following. Just one of the things we're following at that end. And look some other issues we're touching on in the in the morning papers. G come delays. Up to now, we haven't had all of the all of the results. A very piecemeal pedestrian way. They're moving forward. Yolanda, thank you so much. Yolanda Thomas just made a contribution to our program. On YouTube, and when folks uh, do that, it appears live. You know, so thank you very much, Yolanda. If you're joining us via YouTube, in the comment section at the bottom, there's a dollar sign there, and they're going to ask you to purchase a sticker. Some of that, most of that fun, come to us. So thank you very much, Yolanda. Thank you very much. Thanks to the folks at YouTube as well, building all of these features into these digital products. So a lot of delays from GCOM. Still, we do not have. And they said we were going to have most of the results by the end of the night of local government elections. Well, we're still waiting, still waiting for all the results to come in. Still waiting on that. Yeah. And you know, um, it's a strange, strange body. Very strange body. Audrey Stevens, Sheridan Bob, very, very strange entity. How it operates. So they roll out recently, the crawl out, the swim out recently. 
right? But still, they didn't have all the results. Did not have all of the results, and that's one of the things we're watching. Nikashi Glenn, we see you there. The light one, we see you as well. Uh, Glenford Gordon, Olumbu Innes, we see you too. And Onika Fraser, all the other folks who are joining us. It's one of the issues. When will we get it right with Chica? You know, most of the international um, bodies that observe the 2020 election made recommendation that there have to be changes. Had she come too political, right? It needs to be updated, brought into the 21st century. But those aren't things that they're looking at, at in any comprehensive way in relation to Chica. Yeah? They're not looking at that in any comprehensive way. Wish them the best, though. Wish them the best. You know, Cyber News had a very scathing editorial quite recently on um, the PVP's disposition to the press. And one of the things it talked about is the fact that two and a half years, going in three years now, August, three years, right? two years, 10 months plus, you haven't had post cabinet briefings. And they made a point that they kind of respond to issues on the sidelines of events. So if they got a ribbon cut in for a school or something like that, on the sidelines of that event, the president may take questions on some other issue. And the reality of it in the 21st century, we're talking about good governance and all of that, transparency and so forth, accountability. That is not enough. That is not enough. So this little one here run out now. Run out to say that the press has always had unfettered access to Air Finale. Right? That's not the same as having full-fledged what has come to be accepted as a democratic norm. Press conferences where people can pose questions to the president. In that format, and not him having to rush off to something because he's on the sidelines of an event. We think we understand, and we have to push for that kind of mannerism in our democratic process. We have to push for that too. Where is the president? Why no press conferences? You have a whole election, and she come following suit. You hear from them once. How many times you know government election you have for the president? But quick to run in um, Lamaha Gardens recently. Quick to run in Lamaha Gardens recently. But they sit down and do the hard work. You know? Where are the press conferences? They got this big head one dominating everything. Every single thing. Like pot salt. And the fun, he only gets carried out at some particular junctures, on some particular occasions. But the other one, Baldrat, he everything he bought on. Everything. Right? But this is what we have we have been warned when we talked about the third term people. Some of you didn't hear it. Some of you didn't want to hear. Constructive knowledge. Dolly Anderson, we see you there. Elizabeth Gaskin, Cecile Lockhart, we see you as well. And Beatrice Selby and all the other folks. Uh, folks, I, if my memory serves me correctly, I think today Judy is celebrating her birthday. I think so. Judy is in London and parliamentary business. God bless her soul. Uh, you know, things is a big birthday today. I don't remember age and all that. So don't wait for me to tell you. And you know, women don't like to tell the age anyhow. Women don't like to tell the age anyhow. Well, folks, if I sound a little nasal this morning, the old boy coming down with something. But we're fighting right? tooth and nail. Tooth and nail. Things are answer to flu or something. Flap that. We are here fighting. Sickness can deal with itself. So we want to wish Drita a happy birthday. <laughs> and all the other folks. Out there celebrating a birthday today, celebrated once during the course of the week or the upcoming week. Happy birthday to you all. You know, I, I like quite birthday just to reflect on how far I've come. Right? How far I have come. And we've been telling you folks, I've been telling you, happy birthdays are nice. 
I want the program to keep going on. Right? So if you all guys are going to come with some big outlandish, happy birthday, Sheldon, and so on, send us a little fine change. We can keep the program going. <laughs> It'll mean the world to us. It'll mean the world to us, folks, that we can keep the program going. You know, November coming is going to be in three years since we are battling these bullhead bastards, you know, battling and fighting on the front, folks, pushing forward, fighting forward. Three years, and we're looking forward to the other three. Maybe, maybe the next three after that. Ingrid Ambrose, good to see you there. Shirley Bart and Megalia and Yolanda Thomas, Chevron and Cecile Lockhart. And you know, right now we kind of shortlisting a couple of folks uh, so that when I have to be off, I can be on here. We still have the program is going. But we want some strong people to put out front, you know, to bring out front. You know, if I'm, if I'm sick for two or three days, doesn't mean the program can't go on. Nonsense! Nonsense. If you're a boy gone on high, the program can go on. You know, I like it when the British do it. The king is dead. Long live the king. Next. So we <laughs> shortchanging. We have some strong people who can fill in if I have to be off. And I want to do more work getting credible and valid information for you. And sometimes it means I can't always be in front of the camera and be behind the scenes getting the the, the credible value information as well. And I like meeting people and talking with them and asking them questions. How are you all doing? And so and so and so and so and so. Right? I like that. So a couple of things we were working on. Unfettered access. You believe that? <laughs> Unfettered access. Unfettered access. You know, when is the when is the COI in Jamadia gonna happen? The Commission of Inquiry, if I promise, it's more than a month now. So disrespectful to those young people, the families, the township. This country, 20 of our young people lost their lives. Where we had this story with the girl and the um, cell phone being taken away and that whole cockamamie story. Where we are with that? Where are we with that pack of nonsense? Running mad here. Don't run in Lamaha Gardens. Running mad and explain to them why we don't have a commission of inquiry more than a month. More than a month. But if I knows what a commission of inquiry would reveal about their own shortcomings. Uh, folks in the Opposition are calling, I think there's a motion now um, entering into the National Assembly, calling formally for that COI and saying that, as I've said here, we got to erect a monument to those young people. Don't put back nothing on that side there. Don't put back nothing there. Save and accept a monument. But I've told you as well, what will they fear? If an Ali's government would fear a constant reminder of their ineptitude and incompetence. That is what they will fear, putting a monument there. No, no building should go back there. You all have a heart. Children must come and sleep there and 20 people die. That's sacred ground. Spare no expense. Put a proper monument. You know, put a proper monument. I'm quite surprised. These many years later, we knew nothing by Jonestown. We knew nothing like by Jonestown. You know, I would put some replicas of those buildings there. Tourists can come and see that is part of our history and we can't run from it. You know, people can come from all over the world. Sometimes there's some places that the only thing we're known for. You say, Guyana, you think it's a year for legal leadership? No, Jonestown, yeah. If they say Ghana. John Stung. We, we don't want to remember the horrors that occurred, but it did happen. And we could put on a monument that reminds us, don't let this happen again. Too much of people in the PPP drinking the Kool-Aid. Don't let it happen again. Put some replicas down there. You know? A museum, something like that. We could do it. 
The Saudis build all kinds of things in the middle of the desert. We didn't desert. We're too damn lazy. People could come all over the world, from all over the world, and sit down there, you know, and have a quiet moment. The Americans did it for 911. You think if that had happened in American soil, they didn't already have a monument there? The Americans did it for 911, a fantastic memorial to the folks who lost their lives. Fantastic memorial. When you approach that place, all your pores in your skin start growing. Because you knew something, something went on here. Naturally, your spiritual man is in line with that. Ravi Dhrup, I see you there. Ravi has the same thing. So like the 911 site. Yes. I'm surprised these many years later with Jonestown, documentary after documentary, we're talking about tourism, but the hell you all know about tourism. Right? It's not something you want to remember readily, but it did happen. And I can see people from all over the world coming, all over the world coming and making that trek. Those who lost family members, in Joe's song, 900 plus people lost their lives. We, I think there's a plaque or something there in a dense jungle. It's about time, man. Come along. But don't let's miss the moment to honor these victims in Madia. 20 of our young people. 19 girls and that little five-year-old boy lost their lives. And we want to forget them so soon. Where are they now? Remember, minister was assigned to every student. Where are we in that? How are they doing? How are they progressing? No reports. Nothing. Zilch. Silence. Silence. That's how we treat those young people. You know? Don't forget them. They put on a fantastic monument. Let's be a little bipartisan on this one. Put on a fantastic monument to the memory of those young people who lost their lives there. We can do it. We can do it. The opposition is proposing, proposing that. And then we this disgusting, stink, wicked, kung's nastiness. Folks, if you don't know what we're talking about, 16-year-old young lady, indigenous student, just she was 15 years old, when she first met Minister Nigel Damilal. Since that time, you know, she said three months later, she narrates that she was brutally raped and sodomized at the government compound in Chalabar in, uh, where, where is that? Cab uh, Cabaville or Sobrineville? Yep. The public has been unrelenting. He must go. Unfit, unworthy to be called honorable in any way. I don't know, can't force me to say honorable about him anymore. Damning allegations. Damning allegations. One of the things the folks are saying, you know. Daniel has a lot of questions to answer. A lot of questions to answer. And I'm very happy. At least finally, Anug run out. Right? Anug run out. And they have said, questions must be answered. We told you guys last evening, the update, one of the updates we had is that the... Um, one of the we have is that the file, the police finished with the file, and that file is now with the director of public prosecutions. All right. That's one of the things we hear. So that file is with the director of public prosecution. So over to you, Shalimar Ali Hak. Over to you. On, on that come. Over to you. But I want to circle back to what Anuk said. That Minister Darmanal is the headline in this morning's paper. Has a duty to answer 
a host, a host of questions. And again, this was spent by General Secretary of Adult Timothy Jonas. And I'm happy he stepped forward. I'm happy he stepped forward. He said questions got to be answered. Here are some of the questions Timothy wants answers to. Here's some of the questions. And folks, this is a small country. I'll tell you a story just now. It's a small country. Timothy Jonas was by lecture at one time. Yeah. I was one of the better lecturers I had when I did um, uh, industrial relations and management with the University of Ghana. At the certificate level, uh, went on from that and did communications at the undergraduate level and did law as well. I followed, I graduated all the programs. You know, some of the all say, you know, all think is, I dropped from some place, you know. I've been to school. I've been to school. <laughs> Given the opportunity, I could string a subject and a verb together <laughs> and make little sense. One and two ten. Timothy Jonas was one of my lecturers, my early lecturers. Um, I think was contract law. I did with him as a lecturer. He was meticulous. He was a decent fellow. He was a decent fellow. In those days, I don't know what happened now. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Now. <laughs> He's a good guy. <laughs> fairly decent. Fairly decent. <laughs> He's a good guy. He used to be my lecturer. Matter of full disclosure. <laughs> He said a lot of questions gonna be asked. To do my, my old lecturer. <laughs> Justice. Here are some of the questions Timothy says. General Secretary now. Uh, look, look how life is. He's the general secretary of Anu Ghana, General Secretary of Alliance for Change. He says life life stay. Damn, did Darmel ever correspond with the child privately or via telephone? That's one of the questions. And uh, through its general secretary, Timothy, attorney at law, Timothy Jonas, once answered, did Amlal ever correspond with a child privately? Did he ever correspond with her privately via telephone? That's one of the questions they want answer to. Was the child ever with Damalal at a residence? I like that. Broad. Because he might say she never been to um, a child bar, but, or child bar, whatever you call it. My been elsewhere. Was the child ever with Darmalal at a residence or hotel in Camberville or elsewhere in Georgetown? Was the child ever with him? Did Darmalal ever give money to the child? And I think Jonas and Anu got on the legal cap. Did Damnal ever give money to the child? Pastor probably watching me right now. Did Damnal ever give money to the child? Did Damnal ever give money to the parents of the child? Did he ever give money to the parents of the child? And then we got this one here. Did Darmlal procure, right? This is legal terms now. So I, I, I know he got, his, he got his law hat on, right? Did Darmlal ever procure, that word here, procure? You see? You know, when I had a fantastic lecture as well in Professor Aubrey Bishop, I did industrial psychology with Professor Bishop. I did um, industrial relations, I think, as well with him as a lecturer. Fantastic lecturer. Professor Aubrey Bishop, who held many esteemed positions in the judiciary in this country, in the legal fraternity in this country. Professor Bishop <laughs> used to come to some of our lectures, used to be on Sunday. White short pants and black socks up to his knees. British to the core. 
You have to say, you have to elevate the language. Elevate your language. Right? We would say, did he get? Did he get the involvement, you know, but the law? High use of language. Did Damla procure the involvement of Region 2 Commander Kemraj Shibaran to take a statement from the child? You see? The attorney questioning. That's what Anuk wants to know. Did he procure Shibaran, the Region 2 Commander Kemraj Shibaran to take a statement from the chair. You see why you need a bigger and broad investigation? I call it for COI. Independent people, Scotland Yard and CIA. Did he procure the to the phone records? Did he procure the involvement of the region too? Commander Kemraj Shebaran to take a statement from the child. How else did Shebaran run in? How else? And Timothy ends the statement by saying, if he refuses to answer these questions, if he refuses to answer these questions, how can the government continue to protect him? Which is what they're doing. How can the government continue to protect him, even if he is not proved guilty in a court of law? See? I think I'm watching down the line. And they're seeing certain mechanisms in this whole process. That has brought them to the ineluctable conclusion. <laughs> Another law lecture you used to say to me. God rest the dead. You know. How can they continue to protect him? Even if he is not proven guilty in a court of law. Those are the questions Anu got. And there are questions with veracity to it. You know the protest continues. And if you hadn't had a chance as yet to put your name present in the protest, it's Friday. If every day is not like working day to you, Friday, most people sign in at 8 and they're done and they go slow. Take some of your lunch break at 12 and go and register your name present. This is one of those issues in this country. People will long remember and say, where were you on this issue? Where were you? And some of you will find yourself on the wrong side of history. On the wrong, wrong side of history. You know, we spoke with Simona Brooms on the protest line. Former minister, Simona Brooms. She had some thoughts on the hoobly goobly the wishy-washy nature of what is going on. She had some thoughts, folks. Take a look. Take a listen. I believe um, with this matter, this is a very serious matter because one, the person that the allegation is leveled against is one with authority. It's a minister of government who is taking the state resources to groom young girls, to lure them from different communities and regions into Georgetown, into a government compound, a gated area. So they're at his mercies in Chilabar. It's not even a place you can just run out like you understand what I mean to say. And so I think that persons miss that. Also in the statement from the young lady that we have seen, where she was calling, she said, listen, I don't want to die, Mr. President. you got to hear my voice and do something. If an ally of himself, you know, a young man just getting in office as president is shameful. If I don't have a heart for women, and based on what I'm seeing here, there's a whole anti-women um, um, 
some kind of organization that they call themselves sitting in office. I think it is shameful. And I mean, if I had any respect for Irfan, I've lost all. Not a drop for Irfan and his entire cabinet. You understand? Because nowhere I'm saying it again in the world. Even well, we know, we know Dharm Lalinga no shame. And Dharm Lalinga no pride. If anybody with pride and dignity, such allegations, come on. But at least one would expect that the president who gives him that instrument would have called that instrument and take it from a, a, a Madeline. So listen, um, said Dharm Lal, you're not fit for office and take that instrument from me. I'm disappointed. Sherrod, if the people out here, one week, one month, two months, three months, four months, I'll be right here. I'll be right here and encourage persons. This is a time. I mean, we got we got to stand up. Then it can happen at this level. You take state money, give this girl for my ties, share Christmas time, calling her, luring this girl, grooming you call that. This is purposeful. And since you get her in the house, listen, turn on your TV downstairs based on the allegation and take her upstairs. And the girl wrote her entire story. And everybody know, Priya know, Pauline, well, no matter Pauline. Pauline exists by her own self. Pauline just saw these super bets and the little money and the little protection she and I'll get in. This is how Pauline studied. Pauline, she may, I know she takes some more money and fix her teeth. Tootsie Bootsie. You understand? It's a total Pauline studying nothing. Pauline studying all them little gamble shop she got all over this place. The people in Madrid talk about it. Pauline not interested. Listen to this one she wants. She wants a waste of time. She wants to spend all this time in the parliament and do nothing for the indigenous people. And now with what is going on, she wants silence. But she wants to put him out in everything. Because she wants to say, I'm going to ask you to say, anybody, I'm going to make an allegation for me. You understand what I'm saying? There's a shameful, nasty place we live in. You understand? With the big stinking, dirty damn land. There's enough more stinking, dirty more than damn land. I mean, no man in the rain, Sherrod, but listen to me, this thing by the look of them. You understand? I wish you had the bell for ringing it out here, sir. Ring this bell here, finally, you understand? Listen, the you there, it's an opportunity to serve us. And if you're serving us, we can move you from there. Come from this whole country, the whole country, to condemn this. Damn lad got to go. Damn lad got to go. As of now, damn lad is no minister. And not when Irfan says not. We must declare that. Never call them now honorable in this country. Never call him minister. We must dictate dict dict that. We gotta wait for Irfan. We gotta wait for Barjaga. Yeah. Who we gotta wait for for Dodo? It is ridiculous and it is shameful. And I believe that we must stand up. No government, no minister, no police officer, no commissioner, no lie, nobody must continue to groom, use the influence of power and to groom young girls. You understand what I mean? The age of trafficking is 18. How you load her and bring her for sexual exploitation. It is exploitation. The amendment in the 2023. Sherrod, check it, check from page six. Here we tell you about the age and they talk about why you the transporting of a person. That alone and more, which I'll speak to him next time. You understand? But right now, they're on Darmla. Darmla must go anyway. Airfan is a shame. He's a disgrace. You understand? It's a pack of monsters. And we women being stopping. I don't care. Right in George Town today, when the women go to the police station, they gang raping people all over this place. They scare them in these big fancy houses by swimming pool. You understand? It's a stinking thing happening. So nobody want to talk. Everybody backpedaling. Everybody backpedaling. They can't take your front pedal. I know, I know I must tell you that you know what Vindy do? Vindy, hand the button on. Very yeah, smart. Oh, I get my investigation. So I'm waiting now to see what happening at the level of the police. And then they're going to send some so called five of the hoobly doobly to some DPP and all them kind of wishy washy behavior. Look, a five year old was raped. Check and see how they're handling that matter with the allegation. There's an ex allegation, you know. Why this one with them is so special? They're condoning. They are condoning this act. The silence, we've seen it before our eyes. They're condoning it. Yep. It's a pack of them, so it's not them, lad. All of them dirty and stay. They must leave people your children alone. Front pedal, front pedal. Front pedal. Some of you got front pedal too. Come out. Make your voices heard. You don't have to say a word, you know, by your mere presence standing at the, on the protest line. He said, This is where I was when this happened. When you look back years from now, Right? Anouk said, whether it go to court and it's successful or not, 
Questions got to be answered. And I'm certain some of you can answer those questions. But you know the nature, the nature of the beast, you understand what you're dealing with. And folks, as I said, more and more persons are coming forward. We're learning that the Guyana Association of Professional Social Workers, yes, Yesterday called for a prompt, thorough, and impartial and transparent probe to determine whether there is any criminal culpability on the part of the Minister of Local Government, Nigel Damlal, in relation to the in relation to the allegations made by the 16-year-old schoolgirl. They want this is the, again the Guyana Association of Professional Social Workers. They want a prompt, thorough, and impartial and transparent probe. I wish they'd send it to jail and boys probe be good. Let them boys probe him well. Probe him well. Guyana Association of Professional Social Workers. Where are you on the issue? Where are you on this issue? Some of you are also afraid. You only want text. You only want message. You only want message. Them boys watching us. Where were you on the issue? Yolanda Thomas said she thought the organization dead. Them boys kick out. Yesterday, you know when the wrestlers, when I was growing up, pinned the opponents on the mat, the announcer said, and he kicks out. Well, they kick out yesterday. Right? Better late than never. They want to make sure they're on the right side of history. And that's why I'm calling on you. A lot of social media activists. <laughs> right? But we got to go down on the ground. Not the ground of the virtual space that we're in right now. The physical, literal ground. And make your voices heard. Make your voices heard. The way I saw Shadow Attorney General, Minister of Legal Affairs, Shadow Minister of Legal Affairs, Roy Zilford yesterday, on the front lines there, making his voice heard, making his voice come. People gonna ask you, I gonna ask some of y'all the way for this ask y'all. Where were you? Where were you? This issue has struck a nerve in this nation. As former Minister Simona Broom said, we're tired of it. Exploitation of women and girls in this country. Tired of it. Violence against women and girls in this nation. Fed up of it. Fed up. Still waiting on the COI. 20 dead in Madia. Waiting on the COI. And so you can imagine what's going to happen here. They can drag their foot to tail. So for, folks, Shadow Minister of Legal Affairs, Attorney General, Shadow Minister, Roy Zilford, on the front line, and Attorney at Law himself. Here's what he said yesterday. I'm extremely concerned at this stage of the development that the government seems intent to have an investigation that will not be able to sustain itself in a court of law. I'm concerned that, firstly, that this is being investigated by the Guyana Police Force, which is obviously under the control of this government, under the control of Irfan Ali, under the control of the Minister of Home Affairs. We have a situation that is under the control of a permanent secretary who is on the question. So I'm particularly concerned that from the point of view of the interest of justice, that this investigation seems to be one that is not likely to produce a situation of justice for this young girl, her family, and the interests of, of this country at large. I'm also particularly concerned that this is a matter that will have to ultimately go back to the DPP. And whilst the DPP is a function of constitutional authority to exercise a judgment on these matters, I believe in the context of the nature of this issue and the nature of the society that we're involved in, I would believe that it would be a proper and prudent course of conduct for the DPP to relinquish any involvement in this matter and to identify an international lawyer of some repute 
to review the investigation, to review the compilation of statements and all the related matters in relation to this type of things. I'm particularly concerned also, if this is true, that Nigel Garmelal, whilst on station bill, is trying to affect and impact the investigation by making alterations and changes to his home, that should immediately result in the revocation of his bail and for him to be in custody immediately. We have a situation where the reports are that this girl is being denied legal counsel. That is completely unacceptable. It is our constitutional right and she must be allowed to have access to an attorney at law of her choosing. So at this stage, whilst we're calling for Durham Lal to go, there are a number of things from an institutional or constitutional system which show that this government wants to have an outcome that, not, that, that would result in Nigel Durham Lal walking free from these charges. And this is not just a call for Dar Nigel Durham Lal to go, it's a call also to ensure that the systems are put in place to ensure that there will be a fair investigation with a fair prospect of success and a fair prospect of a conviction if it goes forward. I want you to speak to the Amerindian community because it seems that representation from the government side or other organized body, um, we have seen the silence of the Minister of Amerindian Affairs on these matters. And all the other ministers who are women are not saying a thing. Give us, talk to them, talk to the, the Armenian community about who really cares about you. Well, 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 we see clearly that this is, demonstrates a lack of care and concern on the Armenian community. It follows off of, after a very disastrous fire where 20 young persons lost their lives the circumstances in which the government could have prevented it. We have a situation where the government is taking no forceful position on this issue in relation to the indigenous people. To me, in my personal opinion, this is another example of the abuse and the level of atrocities that the Amerindian people and our first people, the indigenous people of this country, would have to suffer. Continuously being exploited by this government. In this instance, is an exploitation of the most heinous and sexual nature that is completely unacceptable. I call not only on the ministers, the female ministers, but particularly the Amerindian ministers to come out and to condemn this issue and for the government to finally listen to the call of the people of this country that there be a fair investigation and that Nigel Damlal must be fired. I'm extremely concerned. Yep, yep. So that's what some of what the shadow minister of Legal Affairs, Royce Dill Ford, Attorney Club, Royce Dill Ford said yesterday. On the front lines there, folks, before we run off and leave you this morning, uh, let's share some other information. And we're still going to be tracking this one throughout the course of the day. It's a long day ahead of us. Another protest. Looking forward to seeing some of you on the front lines. The questions to answer. Let's turn attention, folks, to some of the other things we're following uh, internationally, some of them in the region and some of them some additional information uh, in the 592, folks, in the 592. We're getting some additional information concerning this uh, Titanic submersible that went down. The naval doctor says the victims will have died instantly. Right. You know, they've said a catastrophic implosion you know, happened in that vessel. And that is why they lost contact. And a naval doctor is saying this morning that the victims would have died almost instantaneously from that implosion. You know, thoughts and prayers with all the family and friends and loved ones there. You know, there's a lot to, a lot to deal with. You know, Lithuania, leader says Russia is like a cancer. It's like a cancer. That could destroy the world. This is exactly how Hitler started, you know. Little by little, grabbing up territories here and there, and just like that. And then he became a cancer for truth. You know, I love people who got the courage to speak truth to power. We don't just let cancer fest say, we got to do something. Gotta do something. That's one of the things we're seeing internationally, folks. A couple of the things we're seeing internationally. Regionally, regionally, 
recently. You gotta watch your friends, you know. This is um Antigua and Barbuda. Right? Imagine you're stealing your friends' bank information, shopping out the money. You don't know people put them the little money for what have you in these hard guava seasons. Right? So a lot of people use a name friend loosely. Not me. Not me. Women stole our friends' bank information. Shop out. Shop out. Folks, in good times and in bad, you don't do your friends certain thing. You don't do your friends certain thing. That's why when these boys come along saying we care. Oh, we care for we indigenous brothers and sisters. This is how we care. Right? Sure you care. Name the CY. And let's get on with it. Show how you care. We've been talking about breath. Tropical storm breath. Making landfall in lots of places. Regionally. And in Barbados, for instance, there's a flash flood warning. Comes upon you suddenly. Comes upon you suddenly. They could be very deadly as well. So Barbados has issued some uh, advisories concerning that. And again, this has to do with that tropical storm breath that's winding its way through the Caribbean. That's one of the things we're following as well this morning, folks. Yep. Know your friends. You know, there's a big row in Trinidad and Tobago between the Tobago House of Assembly, you know, its leader and the People's National <laughs> Movement, whether it's Prime Minister Keith Rowley or other members of, of their party, right? And here is the deputy, the minority leader there in the, Trinidad, in, the, in the Tobago House of Assembly. He said, Mr. Augustine, Mr. Augustine, or Augustine, the chief secretary is a coward. You know, the chief secretary has been saying a lot of things, but like he got the backings. <laughs> you know, people like bad. Hold a shot. Hold a shot. <laughs> but they, they really got the backings. Well, Augustine seems to be one of those persons. You know, and the minority leader there in the House of Assembly in Trinidad, he says he's a coward. That's what he said. He's a coward. But if the man says so, who, who are we? Right? So here you have Kevlon Morris, the minority leader, accusing Chief Secretary Farley Augustine of being a coward in not subjecting himself to a debate or questioning at a media conference where, when he speaks on major issues affecting Tobagonians. So it's not just enough to have press conferences. You've got to subject yourself to the scrutiny of the questions. The scrutiny of the questions. got to subject yourself to that. That's how democracies work, man. That's how democracies work. Look at us we're following. In the 592, of course. In the 592. Quite a, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Promises, promises. They say the Wismar Bridge. You remember all the flurry of activities? Before LEG, right? LGE rather, look, government election, the flurry of activities, but well, everything not being stepped down. Stepped down. Right? Reprioritize the city of Wisdom Bridge coming soon, before the end of the year, soon. Soon. Yep. But then they recognize them all, you know. Let them, see, let them see them coming from far and made a decision not to PPP. They said soon, soon the bridge coming. You know, four of the prison officers who were implicated in the leaving, he didn't escape, he left. Smalley, four prison officers who were implicated in Smalley leaving the Masoni prison, they've been placed on bail. Seven. $150,000 each. They said they had to know, they had to colluded with Smalley. 
for him to escape. $750,000 bail each. That's what they're telling us. $750,000 each. Folks, healthy or, or not? Healthy or not? I then the restaurant week. I'm going to sample a couple places. So I can tell you all, of course, not because of hungish. <laughs> so I can tell you all, all that is happening. Right? I want to be able to tell you all, all that is happening out there. So I go in and sample some of that. Restaurant week, it starts today. I think it's going up until the first week into um, July. And one of, the, one of the good things at restaurant week is that the price for food tends to be a little cheaper than it is ordinarily. You know, some places you can't really go eat in this country, right? You know? So hopefully what you, during this period, will come down with a, a, a more manageable budget. A more manageable budget. Check out the, um, the tourism authorities' webpage and then give you all the participating eateries and so on. So it's a good time because most of the restaurants who participate tend to bring down the cost of the food. That's one of the, the highlights. If not the main part of restaurant week, sampling lots on the offer. The Wagyu may come down, I don't know, if there's a participating restaurant. The Wagyu may come down. But restaurant week starts today. I'm getting a couple places. Right? I'm going to get in a, a couple places. And the folks are telling us that there's a protest in Manhattan today, 10 a.m. at the Guyana Embassy, 38th Street. Folks, I need video. Veronica Primo Rollins, I need video. Right? I need video. And when you're doing the video, don't hold the phone on the soul. Try to hold it this way. Right? This is what? 9 by 16. That's the orientation. And this is uh, 16 by 9. Hold it like this when you're doing the video. All right? Send us some video, folks. <laughs> Send us some video so we can share with the folks that they said. 10 o'clock, they're telling us, in Manhattan, at the uh, Ghana Embassy, 38th Street. 38th Street. 10 o'clock this morning, which is in a, a couple of minutes' time. 38th Street there in Manhattan. Restaurant week. All right? I'm not averse to some of you carrying me to restaurants with a sample cup. I'm not averse. <laughs> you know, one of the letters in today's papers as we wrap up says that the public servants are under siege because the Public Service Commission has not been constituted. Three years in, constitutional commissions are not functioning. And these boys want to convince us that they care. Three years in, important bodies like this not operationalized not functioning three years in people are saying it's causing a lot of problems public service under siege right then boys don't like the oversight they don't like the supervision they don't like the checks and balances they talk a good talk about good governance. They talk a good talk about accountability. But the practice, or oh, the evidence is right before us. The evidence is right before us. Timothy, Timmy's wanted. I then a diaper yet. Court of Appeal said to, re, to, to, um, to rule um, on the unlimited guarantee case, the insurance case for the ExxonMobil. Remember, they had to pay down like $2 billion, ExxonMobil, $2 billion US. Just in case. Just in case, I'm watching to the court of appeal for that. The police want Timmy. The police wants Timmy. Michael Abraham called Timmy is wanted by the police for questioning in relation to trafficking in narcotics at Catherine Maikoni. And he's wanted for questioning by the police. If you see Timmy tell it, police want to see him. Trafficking in narcotics, we gotta conduct ourselves properly. Conduct ourselves like big people, properly and in order. And that's some of what we're following this morning. The police want Timmy, Michael Ibrahim, 
for questioning. The one for questioning, folks. That being said, that's going to do it for us in this end. Until our next broadcast, good folks. Until our next broadcast. <laughs> until, until. Folks, if I feel well, we on tonight. We on tonight. If I'm not, I'm going to let you guys know early. I'm going to let you guys know early. But we balance through. We fight through. It's Friday. And I want, to, I want to end the week. On a high note with you folks, thanks to all of you who have been here. You know, keeping our company all these many days, months, and years. Thank you so much. Folks, forget not. Right? Forget not. Your boy has his birthday coming up at the end of the month. Instead of happy birthdays, ow, ow, ow. Send us a small piece. So we can keep going. We can do another three years. Right? Be as generous as you want to be. That's the contact information. Right? We're available on, on quite a few platforms. All for your convenience. We don't sit in a braggadocious way. All for your convenience. We're available via Cash App. Zell. Zelly, Zell, PayPal, MMG is the local cash app, MMG, MoneyGram, and Western Union. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your generosity. We feel it. We want to keep going. Help us to do so. This is how we do these programs day after day, month after month, year after year. That being said, good folks, that's going to do this for us. As I said, until, until, until our next broadcast. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for joining me. And I want to let you know too, folks, you want a good justice in the peace, creation of votes, traffic debate. I want to recommend the Alistair Collins Forum. They know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. Right? They're right down there in the Kalyan Mall. You have a need for justice of the peace, a need for commission of votes, traffic debate. They're right down there in the Kalyan Mall and Lamahashi between Camp and Waterloo Street. Streets between Camp and Waterloo Streets. You can get them on 649 6410. 649 6410. They understand the business. You need a good commission of votes to David. Davids. A good justice of the peace. 649 6410. That's going to do it for us at this end, good folks. Until, until, until the next broadcast. That's our time and that's our program. Stay safe, folks. Stay safe out there. Stay safe. Yep. Until, until, until the philosophy.